Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Margate and it's really nice and sunny. It's really busy here on the beach. It's a weekend in late summer. So uh, we're gonna make the most of today by doing this painting. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and let's get into this video. So unfortunately, I didn't film the part where I painted the sky. So here I'm painting in the sea. I start by painting the horizon, which is typically the darkest part of the sea. And as the sea gets closer and closer to the foreground, it gets lighter. And as I paint the sea, I'm really trying to think consciously what the colors are that I can see. As there is a tendency, especially with beginner painters just to try and paint the sea as being completely blue and making this blue far too chromatic and saturated whereas in nature especially in the UK the sea tends to have a slightly duller grayed down tone and these blue or green hues are very subtle so it's important not to overstate these in order to make your painting look more naturalistic. Here I'm painting in the sand in the foreground and I'm using a mid-tone for this as I'm going to go on top of this section of sand with lighter brush strokes and also pick out some of the darker shadows within the sand. One bit of advice I would give when painting sand is a mistake I always used to make is I used to paint the sand far too yellow or orange and it didn't look very realistic in my paintings. So one thing that I do when I paint sand is I normally add a bit of green into my mix. In this case, I'm adding a bit of permanent green. And although predominantly the sand color is gonna be my yellow ochre and titanium white, I am adding a little bit of this green and a touch of my red as well. And just playing with the mix on my palette before I put this down on the painting. Here I'm just going in with a small brush and picking out some of those frothy sections of the waves where they crash into the sea. And as I get closer to the foreground, there's this section of water on the sand, which is really reflecting the sky and also reflecting some of the sunlight. So this is the lightest area of the painting. So one thing that has happened as I've been painting is the tide has continued to recede and go further and further away so I've got quite a lot of sand in the foreground so one thing that's caught my eye is in the foreground there's a group of friends on the beach who are playing a game where they throw wooden sticks they stand behind these small wooden stumps in the sand and then two teams on each side they try and throw a stick into the middle I think probably similar to bowls where they're trying to get the stick as close as possible uh, to the other stick or, or something like that and I thought this was quite an interesting thing to paint into the scene and if you do know the name of this game then comment below in the comment section because I'm not sure what it's called but it looks like quite a fun game to play on the beach on a sunny day and to paint the people on the beach I first paint the general shapes and proportions of the figure using the shadow value. And I'm not adding much detail at this point, just trying to get the general value and color correct for this darker section of the, the figures. And then on top of this, I'm gonna pick out with lighter, thicker paint, the areas where the sunlight is catching the figure, such as on the back of his legs, on the back of his neck, and then on the person on the right, the sunlight is hitting them more front on, so the front section of the lady is going to be in light. And I'm also very conscious of the direction that the shadows are falling on the sand. I'm really trying to create a coherent light effect throughout the painting. And I find this is helpful when painting plain air to be conscious of where the sun is whilst you're painting. And even though the sun will move throughout the scene, you want the painting to read that it's getting lit by the sun in one direction. So you don't want your shadows all pointing off at different directions because you painted different parts of the painting at different times of the day. 
you really want to try and create a coherent light effect throughout the whole scene. I find it's always quite nice painting people into your paintings from life as it always creates a lot of interest and in this case they were very excited and happy to see themselves depicted in the painting. And I often find this is one of the advantages of painting plain air as opposed to being in your studio painting all day is that you do have a lot of interactions, a lot of positive interactions with members of the public and in many cases that can lead to new contacts and even sales of your paintings. If you enjoyed that video and would like to see more of my new videos then please subscribe to my channel and also give the video a thumbs up. You can also follow me on Instagram at George Frederick Thomas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.